Hi, so in a previous video I showed you how to extract the casein from this stuff. This is dried, dried skimmed milk. We made up the skimmed milk, we added a bit of acid, the casein came out and we turned it into uh, an ivory. Now, it doesn't give a huge amount of casein for a great deal of milk because you've got quite a lot of other things in there. And although this was extraordinarily cheap and you can make it from this or just from liquid milk by adding things like acetic acid to it, uh, sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, lots of acids will do it. Although you can make casein from that, it can be a little bit of a chore. And then of course you've got to go through the purification steps. So if you want to start with milk, you make this up into a, a liquid according to the directions on the back. Add yourself a couple of drops of 1% HCl or 1% sulfuric or ordinary household vinegar. The casein will come out as a ropey substance. Get in there, squeeze it out, give it a wash and you'll have your casein. It's actually much, much easier to buy it. So I bought a bag of this stuff. This is two kilograms of 100% natural casein. And uh, bodybuilders use it. They use it uh, as part of their diet and it smells lovely actually. This is unflavoured, uncoloured, and it costs £16 for these two kilos. Now, given the amount that you use and the amount of effort it is to extract casein from milk, I'd just buy this stuff. This is actually calcium casinate, so it already dissolves in water, making it much easier to uh, use. It's been purified, uh, so this is 100% pure food grade, so you can be pretty sure this is good quality stuff. So, this is the one that I started with because it's just so much easier. If you want to start with milk, by all means start with milk. Now, use 10 grams of this stuff and 5 grams of this stuff. This is borax. It's easy enough to buy. It's used as a cleaning um, agent. You mix it up with water and you clean things with it. So 10 grams of casein to 5 grams of your borax and you just chuck them in 200 millilitres of water and give it a stir around. Then you leave it for about an hour for all the casein to swell up and dissolve and that's what you'll get. There's sort of a gluey kind of off-white mass and that is casein in solution with borax. Now, when we dry that, that would actually dry quite brittle. So what we need to do is add a little something in there as a plasticizer. One of the cheapest and easiest plasticizers is this stuff. This is glycerin. Now, I obviously buy it in big old tubs like that. You can get that at your chemist in a small bottle and you use one teaspoon of, of um, glycerin in this. So this is five grams of borax, 10 grams of casein, and one teaspoon of glycerin, stirred up, let dissolve, left for an hour, and we get that. Now, this is actually a really interesting solution. If you pour this out and let it dry, it'll form a flexible, thin film. But you can also get yourself a bit of close woven cloth. This is a de decorator's rag, it's a piece of cotton. And just dip it into the solution. Remember, most of all this stuff is food grade, so you really don't have to worry about it. Wring it out and either dry it with the hair dryer or hang it up somewhere to dry. Now, if you want a better result, it's worth doing that two or three times. So dip it into the solution, dry it, dip it into the solution, dry it, dip it into the solution. And what you get at the end of it looks like this. Now, this feels stiff, you can feel it. It's stiff, but still fairly firm. Now, if I were to wash that, that would just wash off. So we need to fix that onto the cloth. And the way you fix it is get yourself some tea and make a good cup of tea. And use tea tea bags and pop them into a cup. Leave it for about 20 minutes and you will make yourself a strong cup of tea. Now the good thing about this strong cup of tea and what this tea contains that you really need is this stuff. This is tannic acid. Now the tea has quite a lot of tannin in it and the tannin will do the job. It's without a doubt better to use tannic acid. So if you buy some tannic acid, you can do a much better job of this. But if you buy some tea and make up a cup of tea, it will do pretty much the same job. So you get your pre-coated piece of cloth and put it into your tea and leave it for about 20 minutes. When you pick it out, it will have become tea stained. You just hang that somewhere to dry and at the end of the time, you'll get this. Now, this is weird. It's rubbery for a start. When you've made it, you'll feel how rubbery it is. It feels a bit like um, a rubber band, actually. So you've made a rubbery coated piece of cloth. Now the interesting thing about this cloth is once you've made it rubbery, it's waterproof. So what I've got here is just some ordinary tap water. And if I drip the tap water on, you can see that it 
beads up instead of soaking it. So for a better view of this, I did a piece of paper and I've got here some deionized water with a little bit of methylene blue in it, so you can see it. And if I put that onto the paper, you can see that the water just rolls around the paper without getting absorbed. So that's kind of cool. Now, like I said, the best thing to do with that is to use um, tannic acid rather than tea. But if you don't want to use tannic acid, just use tea. And there you go, how to make yourself a waterproof cloth from milk and tea. I hope that was of interest and thank you very much for watching.